The recent strike against Israeli military targets from Lebanon stands as one of the most significant retaliatory actions in the region since the 2006 Lebanese war. In the midst of this response, the much-vaunted Iron Dome missile defence system, which has long been regarded as a symbol of Israel's technological prowess and the backbone of its military defence, suffered a massive and unexpected failure. This breakdown occurred at a time when European settlers in Israel, as well as the Israeli population more broadly, expected the Iron Dome to offer them complete protection from incoming missile threats. Instead, the system faltered, allowing missiles to bypass its multi-billion dollar defense infrastructure, striking sensitive military and civilian targets. What makes this particular failure even more unique is the visual evidence emerging from the aftermath. Satellite images and reports reveal a deeper vulnerability within Israel's defensive operations. The Iron Dome, which many believed could stop almost any missile threat from groups like Palestine Resistance and other Lebanese resistance forces, showed an underwhelming performance. It managed to intercept some of the incoming missiles, including those aimed at Haifa in northern Israel, but it struggled to keep pace with the barrage. In fact, some of its interceptors malfunctioned, landing on civilian homes, causing additional damage rather than preventing it. This has raised urgent questions about the reliability of the Iron Dome, especially when Israeli citizens place their faith in the system at such a critical moment. This unexpected performance failure has inevitably sparked widespread speculation. Many are now asking, what kind of missile was able to penetrate the Iron Dome's defences? To answer this, we must first look to statements from the Lebanese resistance forces, which revealed crucial information about the offensive. According to a press release from the Lebanese side, the missile that defeated the Iron Dome is a newly developed model called the Fadi-2. This missile, designed by Lebanese resistance engineers, was specifically created to challenge the Iron Dome's ability to intercept and neutralize threats. The Lebanese forces had been preparing this development in secret, and it seems their strategy paid off in the form of a missile capable of bypassing Israel's multi-layer defense systems. The Fadi-2 missile marks a turning point in the evolving dynamic between Israel and its adversaries in Lebanon. Unlike previous models, this missile appears to have been optimized not only for range and precision, but for evading Israel's air defense networks. The missile's ability to strike at strategic locations, such as the Ramat David Air Base, one of the most crucial military installations in northern Israel, suggests that it has the power to strike at the heart of Israel's military infrastructure. The satellite images of Ramat David, taken both before and after the strike, show visible damage to the base. This base, originally established as a Royal Air Force RAF airfield during the British Mandate, is now a central hub for Israel's air operations in the north. Its importance cannot be overstated as it houses the Israeli Air Force's Northern Command and serves as a key point for surveillance and military operations targeting Lebanon, Syria and Iraq. The destruction of parts of Ramat David Air Base, likely caused by the Fadi-2 missile, represents a significant blow to Israel's military operations in the region. It disrupts their ability to monitor and respond to resistance movements along the northern border and the loss of such a strategic facility would certainly hamper their intelligence-gathering capabilities. The speculation that the area struck may have housed surveillance systems crucial for operations in Syria, Lebanon and Iraq only adds to the gravity of the situation. Striking this airbase shows that the Lebanese resistance was not simply retaliating for the series of killings in southern Lebanon. It was sending a clear signal that they have the capability to hit Israel's most critical military assets. The fact that the Iron Dome was unable to fully defend such a vital military target raises serious questions about its future efficacy in larger-scale conflicts. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, in his response to the attack, expressed deep concern about the implications of the strike. His vow to retaliate with overwhelming force against Lebanon reflects his awareness of the significance of this moment. The potential collapse of Israel's ability to monitor northern threats could be disastrous for Israeli defense strategy, especially considering the renewed tensions with Lebanese resistance and other factions. Netanyahu's strong rhetoric indicates that Israel is bracing for a longer, more drawn-out conflict, one that could spiral beyond its current scope and involve other regional powers. I have a message for the people of Lebanon. Israel's war is not with you, it's with Hezbollah. For too long, 
Hezbollah has been using you as human shields. It placed rockets in your living rooms and missiles in your garage. Those rockets and missiles are aimed directly at our cities, directly at our citizens. On the Lebanese side, Hezbollah and its allies seem emboldened by the success of this strike. Syed Nasrallah's deputy, Sheikh Naim Qasim, declared that the real war has now begun signaling an escalation in hostilities that could last until the Israeli occupation ends. His remarks emphasize the long-term goals of the resistance, the liberation of occupied lands, including Palestinian territories. From their perspective, the success of the Fadi-2 missile is not just a military victory, but a strategic one that opens new possibilities for challenging Israeli dominance in the region. ولن نحدد كيفية الرد على العدوان لقد دخلنا في مرحلة جديدة عنوانها معركة الحساب المفتوح نتابع فيها جبهة الإسناد والمواجهة ومن خارج الصندوق The broader implications of this event cannot be ignored. The failure of the Iron Dome, at least in this instance, marks a significant shift in the balance of power in the ongoing conflict between Israel and its northern adversaries. For years, Israel's air defense systems have been perceived as nearly invincible, capable of defending against even the most sophisticated missile threats. Now, with the introduction of the Fadi-2 missile and the visible weaknesses in Israel's defense capabilities, a new chapter in the conflict may be unfolding. This shift raises questions about how Israel will adapt to these new threats, whether they will invest in improving or replacing the Iron Dome, or if they will seek alternative defensive measures to counter future missile barrages. The Fadi-1 missile is an indigenous creation of the Lebanese resistance designed to counteract Israel's military presence in the region. It marks a significant shift in the balance of power due to its advanced capabilities which reflect the growing technological and military proficiency of the Lebanese resistance. The Fadi-1 missile is a medium-range ballistic missile that is believed to have enhanced accuracy, longer range, and more destructive power compared to earlier versions of the group's weaponry. While exact specifications are not officially confirmed, it is widely reported that the missile has a range capable of striking deep into Israeli territory, including critical military and civilian infrastructure. One of the key aspects of the Fadi-1 missile is its guidance system. The missile is reported to incorporate sophisticated GPS or inertial navigation systems, making it capable of precision strikes on specific targets. This would represent a major improvement over older, unguided rockets used by the Lebanese resistance, which had a more limited capacity to hit strategic targets accurately. The ability to precisely target critical military installations, communication hubs, or airfields would significantly enhance the group's deterrent capacity and retaliatory capability in any potential conflict. In terms of payload, the Fadi-1 missile is believed to carry a significant explosive charge designed for maximum impact. Depending on its configuration, the missile could be equipped with either high-explosive warheads or bunker-busting munitions, capable of penetrating fortified positions. This would allow the Lebanese resistance to effectively counter Israel's heavily fortified military installations or engage in urban warfare by targeting reinforced buildings. Another critical element of the Fadi-1 missile's design is its ability to evade Israeli missile defense systems. Israel has invested heavily in missile interception technologies, including the Iron Dome and David's Sling, both of which are designed to neutralize incoming rockets and missiles. However, reports suggest that the Fadi-1 has been designed with countermeasures, such as varying flight trajectories or deploying decoys,
to overwhelm or evade these defensive systems. This makes the missile a more potent threat, as it has a higher probability of penetrating Israel's defensive shield. The Fadi-1 missile's potential impact on the regional military landscape is profound. The missile gives the Lebanese resistance a strategic advantage in asymmetric warfare, as it forces Israel to dedicate more resources to defense and deterrence, particularly in terms of missile defense infrastructure and early warning systems. Furthermore, the existence of such advanced weaponry heightens the risks for Israel in any potential ground or aerial campaign against the Lebanese resistance, as the consequences of an all-out conflict would include the threat of sustained missile attacks deep into Israeli territory. The introduction of the Fadi-1 missile also signifies a broader trend in the regional arms race, where non-state actors are increasingly capable of acquiring or developing advanced weaponry. This has the potential to complicate Israel's military calculus, as it faces not just state actors with organized armies, but also highly capable militias equipped with sophisticated, homegrown weapon systems. From a strategic standpoint, the Fadi-1 missile serves as a critical element in the Lebanese resistance's deterrence policy. The missile's capabilities make it clear that any future conflict with Israel would carry a significant cost for both sides. Its deployment reflects the evolving nature of military engagement in the Middle East, where non-state groups can now project power far beyond their immediate borders and challenge even well-equipped state militaries like Israel's.